Hello YouTube, Gorod Radio Moscow with another beer review for you. We're continuing on with this German series of beer reviews that I'm doing. We've got one here that comes from my region. You might be wondering actually why I've got the two bottles here. And uh, basically when I was doing the notes for this guy, I found out that these were both the same beer and I bought them thinking they were different because they're labelled differently and things like that. But um, I was researching it and so I found they were the same. So I thought it'd be good to have them both in the video. But today we're going to the Badische Staatsbrauerei uh, Rothaus and they come from a little town called Grafenhaus in the sort of very southwestern part of Germany, right at the bottom of Baden-Württemberg. So as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery, but as I always say, if you are simply just interested in the tasting of the beer, then feel free to go on towards the latter part of the video and you will catch that particular segment. But as I mentioned, the brewery is a, the brewery comes from a little town called Grafenhausen, which is about 55 kilometres to the southeast of Freiburg in southwestern Germany, Baden-Württemberg. But the Rothaus Brewery was actually founded in 1790 as part of the Benedictine Monastery of St. Blaise, and this monastery dates back to the year 1681. Now, the location of the monastery actually proved to be very good for business, as there was a plentiful supply of water, obviously with it being in the Black Forest, and with a lot of wood also for heating the brewery up as well. But the monastery was actually located on a very important trade route from Freiburg to Grafenhausen. It was actually at the highest point on the route, so from both sides you're climbing the hill, and then you've got a nice brewery there to go and have a drink. It sounds ideal, actually. But the founder of the brewery was the head abbot Martin Gerbert II and he was born in 1720 in Horb am Necker and then he was ordained in 1744 but apparently he was a very gifted scientist as well as a very talented politician and he helped all his dominions grow quite successfully and apparently is also credited with having founded the Sparkasse Bank which is Germany's oldest savings bank and I found this quite cool because it's, you see these all over the place in Germany but unfortunately he died in 1793 in the only saw a few months of the brewery activity actually so he, he produced he started something very great but never really got to see it but as a result of the secularization in Germany the brewery became part of the Grand Duchy of Baden in 1806 and the brewery then became known as the Grand Ducal Baden State uh, Stadt Rothaus and in 1811 only 20 years after the brewery's inception the brewery had to increase its capacity due to the ever increasing increasing demand for their beer and they carried out further renovations to the brewery in 1842 to 1846 quite an extensive project in fact but the brewery was damaged by a fire in 1847 however there was minimal damage due to the action of their employees and they managed to resume their production quickly after but uh, as part of the Baden revolution interestingly enough the brewery was occupied in the years 1848 and 49 by 120 Prussian troops and then the brewery had to cater for them as well it sounds like not a bad military tour if you like but the unification of Germany in 1871 saw the opening of new markets to Rothaus resulting in further expansions and this included a special railway wagon uh, to transport the beer obviously and a new steam engine, a new kiln and many new machines for the actual brew house itself but the brewery produced their first bottles in the year 1892 at Christmas and then five years later they purchased their first motor car to transport the beer in 1897 and this is one thing that a lot of German breweries actually like to mention in the history of their brewery in fact but the beginning of the 20th century was very difficult for Rothaus because of a major fire in 17 in 1904, sorry, which destroyed large parts of the brewery and the production didn't resume again until 1905 and during the First World War the brewery suffered a lot due to the lack of materials and the production dipped significantly it went from 32,000 hectolitres per annum in 1913 to 6,900 hectolitres in the year 1919 and that was the same as 1862 so the brewery's production levels went back 50 years which was kind of disastrous I guess but as a result of this the company became a private stock company and they had to do this basically to keep themselves afloat. But the brewery survived the Second World War largely unscathed, however in post-war Germany they had to briefly uh, alter their production under the command of the French occupation forces and this was just due to the shortages of supplies in post-war Germany of course there. But in 1948 they actually resumed brewing at their full capacity. Now in 1956, company director Egwin Led Nagel, he introduced the Tannenzapfel, and this is this series of beers here, the little ones, and this literally means little fir cones, and it refers to the shape of the bottle, and you can see this in the Tannenzapfel series of beers today, and this is the, these are the six pack beers basically, and these are the one, these are the little ones that are referred to as the little fir cones, the Tannenzapfel series, but um, the, this was unusual when these were introduced, because in 1950s, you would buy beer in 0.7 litre bottles in Germany, 
Germany. But um, they actually found many, many fans. And Hans Fender became the he head of the brewery board in 1966. And he grew the brewery successfully during the 70s and 80s, with production exceeding well over 300,000 hectolitres per annum. And then he was uh, succeeded by Dr. Norbert Nothelfer, sorry. And uh, he is credited with transforming the brewery into the modern practice that it does today. So that's the more modern history of the brewery, very briefly. But I really like going through the history of these breweries with you. But today the brewery is actually one of the most modern and well equipped in Germany with their brewery that opened in 2006, a brand new facility. And they're also one of the most popular breweries in Germany. In 2009, I actually also saw them introduce their uh, alcohol fry tannin zapfel and also introduce their Hefeweizen beer, and, uh, sorry, an alcohol fry tannin zapfel and also an alcohol fry Hefeweizen, of course, there. But their other beers include Merzen Export, uh, Pills, uh, the Hefeweizen, the Alcohol Fry and the Radler and these are all available in the sort of Tannin Zapfo bottles, the 0.33 litres and also the half litre 0.5 litre bottles, however you want to describe it. But I'll just let you have a little look at the bottle and caps of these guys. I actually quite like the, the bottle on this one but the thing you'll notice on this one here it has little snowflakes and stuff but apparently there were two methods for uh, cooling the beer in the old days if you like. And then, uh, apparently the first one was to just cut large blocks of ice and put them in the brewery cellar. But then the second was to give this was what gave the ice apple beer its name. This particular beer itself, and this was that they had a large wooden structure, and this was sprayed with water so that icicles would form, and then these would be broken off and used to cool the beer. And this was how they used to cool this guy. So this is why it has the uh, the ice apple name, if you like. So it's quite cool in that sense. But I'll bring the camera up and let you have a little look at this guy here. You can see they always have this little character on the bottle here and you can see there's the the Badish Stack Brauerei symbol there for Roadhouse. This guy has the little foil top. I'll open that up in a minute, but I'll let you see the bottle cap on the other one because you can see that a little bit better, of course. And you can see it's the same guy on it. It's the same guy on it again. I'm sure I wrote down actually where the the character came from. The character apparently is uh, the figure on the bottle is Brigd Craft, and it's a blonde girl in the traditional Baden dress. And apparently Brigd Craft is actually a pun in the local dialect because they say Beer gibt Kraft, which means beer give strength. So this is a little joke if you like, a little joke, uh, bread craft actually on their beer. So it's quite cool, the little blonde girl on the beer there. I'll just bring up the camera again and check you're seeing this guy. But yeah, you can see her there. But you can see again the similar bottle and you can see on the top there is the, the Roadhouse bottle cap there which is quite cool and then there's the top label for you there, who uh, for you guys who are interested. It says Zeit 1791 obviously when the beer was in safety. And I'm surprised they don't, I thought they would have said Zukunft because that's what my university he says is Zukunft uh, Heidelberg University and stuff like that. But let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting here. This one is a 5.6% Merzen beer. I've explained to you what the Tannin Zapfel series is, but let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting. I'm going to have the 3.3 thir the three, three litre one today actually. If I can get this guy, usually you can get these guys to open like this. There we are. I, I quite like having the little, um, the little things like this on it. It's quite cool just to take these off. But as you can see, as I mentioned, similar bottle cap there. But let's get this guy out and get on with this. Quite excited to review this one. I don't think I've tried this one yet, in fact. So I'm quite interested to give it a go. As you can see, a little bit of smoke on the opening there. And we'll just get this guy into the glass. So one thing I noticed in Germany that was quite funny actually that um, here in the supermarkets and stuff they just take the beer out of the six packs. Usually with these guys you get them in the six packs and people just take the uh, the some beers out of the six packs and just buy them singly. At home if you did that you would be you'd get bought from the store security and stuff like that. So it's quite funny that they do it here in Germany uh, and I, I do quite like that idea. You can just if you only want one beer you can just get that. But as you can see, this guy has a nice little one finger head, quite foamy, maybe slightly off white, but it's quite, it's actually turning into more of a sort of a bubbly head than a foamy head, if you like. You can see it's a very sort of kind of bright golden colour, not quite a straw, a straw one, a deep golden colour, it's completely clear. There's a good bit of carbonation kind of going up to the top there actually. I think this is quite a well carbonated beer, a lot of little bubbles just travelling up to the top and you can see the head is just beginning to dissipate as well. In terms of the aroma with this one, quite light malty aromas, definitely a hint of sort of sweet bread, maybe like a little bit of brown sugar, but there's some kind of grassy element from the hops as well, maybe just a little bit of floral character. And you can also 
I think you can pick up a little bit of citric fruit in there, in fact, actually. And there's a, maybe even a little bit of herbal character. It's quite an interesting one, this. It's quite a, a blended aroma, if you like. It's not too pungent in any way. But it's quite, it is quite a malty one. You can get a hint of the, the sweet bread, like I say, a nice little bit of brown sugar, and then the hops seem to be a little bit complex, a mix of kind of floral, citric, and, uh, and sort of herbal character in there as well, actually. But yeah, a very nice one. But let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on. So this is the Badish Stadtbrauerei Rothaus, uh, and this is their Merzen beer. So let's give this guy a try. Definitely malty in the taste. Yeah, you're getting that nice bit of malty bread on the opening, and it does have a little bit of cereal character to it, actually, and that... It, you don't really pick up on that in the aroma. It does have just a little bit of spice character in it. Yeah, there is just a little bit of spice coming on the front of the tongue there, I would say, but you've got that nice bready malty opening actually with some nice it does have a bit of caramel in the background the nice brown sugary elements to it yeah really nice one this actually I would say but the hoppy part of the beer actually has a little bit of fruity character to it it's not so much a citric fruit actually it's almost more like a red fruit like a don't know, like strawberries or raspberries or something. A bit. It has a little bit of a berry fruit taste. This actually, which is quite unusual. I'd say so. Yeah. Once you get past that nice sort of caramel and and bready opening there, there is a little bit of of some sort of berry fruit in there. The fruit. I was picking up a little bit of citrus, but it's more of a, a berry fruit definitely that's coming out. So that's really unusual for a, a, a Mertzen beer in my experience. But yeah, it's quite, it is quite actually quite a fruity one. And there is a lot of the sort of floral and grassy character there and there, but the hops, you're getting a good mix of the, the sort of floral, herbal and, and grassy character and they're mixed in with that fruit so it's quite cool. Like, like I say, I've never encountered a Mertzen that gives off a sort of more kind of berry and tart flavour if you like. So it's, this is quite an interesting one in fact. But yeah, this is a, this is a, a nice Mertzen and obviously this brewery is a bit more of a, an industrial brewery I guess than uh, and some of the others, but the, to have the Badish Staatsbrauerei status, if you like, it's obviously a very good one, and I really like the beers from this one. I drink the Pils a lot, but this is the first time I've had the Merzen, but this is a really good one, in fact. Mm. Yeah, in terms of the mouth, it's light-bodied, easy drinking. It's actually just a little bit watery, but it complements the beer well. It's meant to be an easy drinking beer. And it actually makes it quite refreshing, in fact. This is a good sort of spring beer, I would say. It's still got a little bit of warmth in it in the mouthfeel, actually. When you take it in, it's not really an alcohol warmth, but it does give you just a little bit of warmth as you swallow it. So, yeah. It's really nice, in fact, this one. I recommend, if you get the trance, if you're in Germany, try some of the Rothaus beers. Uh, really, really nice Rothaus very very good brewery in my experience so far like I say I've drank the the pills quite a lot and the Hefeweizen is nice I'll review these two guys for you at a later date but check out the Roadhouse Stadt Brauerei uh, I put the video I'll put the link to the website in the video description so definitely go and check it out if you're interested in seeing more German beer reviews please subscribe thanks for your support over my last uh, over my last couple of videos and things like that it's much appreciated and I hope you like this beer and let me know in the comment section if you do happen to have tried it yourself as I say a very interesting merch and mainly due to the fact that it has that little bit of berry flavor into it that makes it a little bit unusual from the rest but thanks again for watching my beer reviews I hope you found it informative please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff. Thanks again for your, your uh, support and I shall catch you soon. Cheers.